بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم این السلام علیکم ایوری ون گڈ ٹو سی یو بیک ان کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ ان دا لاسٹ سیشن یو آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ وسل بلوئنگ اینڈ ہاؤ وسل بلوئنگ بیسکلی ہسٹوریکلی ڈیولپ اینڈ بیکیم انسٹیٹیوشنلائز ٹوڈے وی گوئنگ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ وسل بلوئنگ فرام دی مور کنسیپچل کانٹیکسٹ اینڈ سی واٹ آر دی ڈفرنٹ انگریڈینٹس آف وسل بلوئنگ ہاؤ از اٹ ڈیفائنڈ بائی ڈفرنٹ ریسرچرز اینڈ موسٹ امپارٹنٹلی ہاؤ اٹ از بینگ پریکٹسڈ Uh, around the world now ladies and gentlemen when we're talking about understanding whistleblowing it can be defined as an act by an individual who believes that the interest of the public overrides the interests of the organization he or she serves so the loyalty of the individual is not to the organization but the loyalty of the individual is to society as a whole the individual is more concerned about the impact of whatever work service or product is being provided to the community at large and how it is benefiting the majority of people rather than the interests of a few, few elite corporate elite and they are doing it in the wrong way or they are doing malpractices or they are doing corrupt practices so whistle blowing basically is adopted by people who have a great concern of the community or society at large and their loyalties are not with the organization it doesn't mean that they are not good employees they could be the best employees but they basically have a priority of the interest of the general public or the public at large now when we are looking at whistle blowing then there are six elements the first the whistle blower the most important element the individual who is going to uh, make public the uh, secret information or the mall practice or the corrupt practice that is taking place the second element is the disclosure subject the act that was perceived for example if someone uh, is uh, using a dangerous chemical in a food product so that is the disclosure subject that dangerous chemical is the disclosure subject so that is extremely important and again uh, after the whistle blower this is the second element that what is the incident so the third element is the act of disclosing the wrong doing and that is very important that uh, how is that wrong doing or corrupt practice or mal practice being done what is the methodology what is the technique uh, what is the outlay so how is it uh, basically being materialized and then the fourth element is the target organization itself which part of the organization uh, is involved in that heinous crime or that corrupt practice and the fifth one is a recipient to whom the disclosure will be made an outcome that means uh, where is the whistle being blown who is it being blown to is it the secp is it the nab is it fia is it psc so all of these different organizations uh, are or is it the judiciary uh, or is it just a superior within the organization is it the board it could be anyone and they basically are the ones who are receiving the whistle blowing uh, information now when we look at it uh, from another context then uh, a whistle blower is an employee or an any authorized person who makes an unauthorized disclosure of information about criminal or irregular conduct of business or activities which are detrimental to the functioning of an organization so like mentioned earlier this person basically is sharing information which is detrimental uh, to some stakeholder or to the public at large and the organization is doing this small practice or corrupt practice and this whistle blower is the one uh, who uh, is giving this unauthorized disclosure because it is not being approved uh, by the superiors and it is basically being concealed or hidden and therefore that concealment is being shared uh, with uh, some organization typically a whistle blower is seen as an unauthorized disclosure uh, of information when the whistle blowers report wrong doing in a, in the wrong way unauthorized whistle blowing causes negative response from the organization so again uh, like i mentioned to you uh, the organization would indulge in retaliation in retribution in victimization and many a times uh, whistle blowers can come into major problems it's also happened in pakistan but because whistle blowing is a little bit confidential therefore uh, even sharing with you uh, some pertinent examples becomes very difficult but in many large organizations in pakistan it has also taken place and it has been able to uh, adversely affect uh, corrupt practices and also curb corruption so uh, that is the good news that whistle blowing is a very effective tool to curb corruption uh, in order for a disclosure to take place the whistle blower must witness an incident or practice or set of incidents or practices as incorrect and improper so it could be one act it could be one product it could be one service it could be one mechanism it could be one result or it could be a series of acts Uh, or product so again uh, it would be circumstantial and would differ 
from institution to institution and from time to time. So, there are different practices taking place. This observation then causes the whistleblower to disclose the perceived wrongdoing and the disclosure may only take place once such a perception uh, tends to exist. The wrongdoer, the wrongdoing must also be perceived as important for the individual to disclose it. So, it, usually whistleblowing is not about some petty issues, they are always about some mega issues which have an impact across the organization and sometimes across nations also. And that is why whistleblowing is very important. Most experts see wrongdoing in the organization as including unethical, illegal or harmful practices uh, in the organization. There are two types of wrongdoing fundamentally. One is organizational crime and the third is occupational crime. So, in organizational crime what we see is, is that whole organizations are involved in it. For example, the Yakuza, for example, the different mafias, for example, uh, certain uh, cartels. So, that is all organizational crime taking place. And then sometimes there is occupational crime that uh, a person in one particular occupation, you know, in one particular post, uh, in one particular designation uh, is doing it. So, that would be more occupational. Sometimes occupational crime can also be in the context of how things are being done against personnel or employees of an organization. So, that also uh, is considered uh, wrong and therefore, there can be whistleblowing about that. And when we are talking about wrongdoings, it can include uh, criminal activity, contravention of any statute, improper or unauthorized use of public and other funds, uh, miscarriage of justice, abuse of power, maladministration. Uh, in whistleblowing, the blower has a good intention of preventing the wrongdoing and we see that uh, it tends to defame the people who are involved and therefore, it can have its own repercussions. And in those repercussions, sometimes the whistleblower can also face a lot of suffering. So, uh, definitely it requires a lot of courage and also uh, a, a lot of uh, bravery for the individual to blow the whistle because it is not only him who is affected, sometimes his or her family is also being affected. And therefore, uh, this is a very, very difficult proposition even though there are laws and frameworks to protect the whistleblower. <laughs> now, Nier and uh, <clears throat> Michael in 1985 basically defined whistleblowing as disclosure by organization members, former or current, of illegal, immoral or illegitimate practices under the control of their employees to persons or organizations who may affect some action. So, again, it is the person, it is the act, it is the organization where is it taking place, the organization which is going to be regulating it and then putting it all together, the pieces of the puzzle to ensure that a wrongdoing is basically stopped. So, that is whistleblowing. Thank you so much.